Hey, what's up guys? I'm Rick at Techspin, and on review today is the new Marvel TV series, Iron Fist. All 13 episodes of the first season released last Friday, the 17th of March, and I've been marathoning it since. Just finished it last night, so I'm here to talk about my impressions and if it's worth your time. Let's get to it. Iron Fist, as the title suggests, is centered around the main character who kind of obviously trained in some martial arts. Marvel TV shows are a more dramatic, story-driven affair with well-written build-ups. Iron Fist follows a strong run of shows so far from Marvel. There's Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones, with Luke Cage probably being the strongest of the lot. I really love the style of Daredevil also, while Jessica Jones I almost didn't finish, though the performances by lead actress Kristen Ritter as metahuman Jessica supporting cast including the amazing Carrie Ann Moss as legal badass Jerry Hogarth, and Mike Coulter as Luke Cage for seven episodes got me through. Legion is Marvel's new show on FX, and I've seen the first two episodes. It's shaping up to be really great. While the Luke Cage series starts pretty strong from the first episode, Iron Fist has you go through a bit of discovery to find out who this guy is, why he's like that, and what he came back to do. The pacing at the start is slower than I'd like, but about three episodes in, the writers found their stride and pacing becomes excellent, except for a small part for about 10 minutes later on in the series, which reminded me of Game of Thrones, too exposition heavy. Then it's right back into action. Apart from this, it's really well put together throughout. I can say there's actually various similarities with character story and development to DC's Arrow TV show, but that comparison is made in the best way possible. They both have strong lead characters, an ensemble cast with developed intertwined stories, and some great action. The backstory builds the stage for the Fist's return to society and centers around the disbelief and the trust of people he meets who shape the direction of this narrative. Speaking of DC, many have said to me that Marvel makes better movies and DC makes better TV shows, but that's now in the past. Arrow, Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow are top-notch TV shows, especially if you like superheroes. But Marvel has stepped up their game, and that can't be said anymore. This is because Marvel seems to put more effort to leave openings for writers to connect plot lines, and they use the same actors to keep you emotionally invested in the universe you've watched before. DC has recently stepped up their game, bringing Arrow characters to Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, creating some truly epic crossover episodes. And side rant, while DC may be the first to base a movie from a TV show in recent years, recasting their lead character The Flash, played by the charismatic and brilliant Grant Gustin for another actor is a terrible, terrible choice. If Daredevil, Luke Cage, or Iron Fist get movies, fans will want to see those strong leads take it all the way. Flash fans want to see this show that they support go big too. You know, it worked for the Star Trek original and Next Generation TV shows just fine. Now Grant was very gracious about the recast and wished the actor well who was chosen for the movie, but damn, that's gotta be a kick in the pants. Personally, I won't be seeing the movie. That's not the Flash to me, sorry. Go Team Gustin! Okay, back to the review. Our lead character Danny is played by Finn Jones, and diehard Game of Thrones fans may recognize him as Marjorie's brother. I certainly didn't. What a different side to this actor. You really get to see 100% of what he can do. And boy, is it good. The series starts out with him disheveled and in need of a serious shave, but unlike Green Arrow, Danny has to fight his way up for quite a while. It not only shows his values and morals are different to those in the big city, but the character's philosophy and spiritual side influences his interactions with others. But it does slow the start quite a bit. The brother and sister team of Ward and Joy Meacham, played by Tom Pelfrey and Jessica Strope, are very well cast. Ward is a hard case company man and Joy is the company's strict legal defense, and I appreciate that they didn't make her a weak or dependent character. Writing her as strongly as they did gave them storyline options. And without giving anything away, some really interesting situations unfold late in the season because of it. Ward's character is also well done with his own strengths and demons. I won't say too much about English-born Asian actress Jessica Henwick's character here, as it's part of the story reveal. She was amazing in Game of Thrones as Nymeria Sand, with great control over her expression and delivery, making her ideal for a large part in the fist. Fantastic casting choice, and she adds a voice of reason and contrast. David Wenham is in this also, yes! Best known for his roles in both Gerard Butler Vehicle to Fame 300 as the scribe Dilios, and also in Van Helsing as the monk with the mouth, Carl. 
And actually, I'm still just a friar. I can curse all I want. Damn it. And of course, there's Faramir from the first Lord of the Rings trilogy. I really need to watch that again. He certainly doesn't disappoint in Fist, and his scenes, apart from Finn's, are some of the strongest in the show. The writers really gave him a great setup, depth of character, terrific dialogue, and easily the most memorable line in the show. Don't forget to like this video. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when the next video is ready. There are two characters pulled in from previous shows, one being a certain nurse. Actress Rosario Dawson has some great dramatic scenes and turns out to be not useless, getting into the action just a bit. I'm really happy to see her here, and it's not surprising considering it's part of the setup for the Marvel series The Defenders, which has just finished filming according to Screen Rant, and is slated for a May 12, 2017 release date, though that's not 100% confirmed, of course. Although tied into the Marvel Universe, you don't need to have seen the other series before diving into this one, although fans will appreciate that Luke Cage, uh, Daredevil, and Jessica Jones get mentions, and a certain supporting character from one has several scenes in Fist. Stellar acting and performances by them also. I mentioned them before in this review. Shh. Apart from the characters, the locations are chosen very well and fit the feeling of the show. Thinking about it, and although it might seem a little strange, Iron Fist reminds me a bit of Fringe, with the same high production values and memorable characters. This Marvel TV series certainly had more budget this time around, and they take full advantage of it, whether it's the cold, bleak office building corporate rooms, a training dojo, or a man under house arrest living quarters. I had to word that last one carefully. Whew. <laughs> the effects aren't over the top and feel perfect for a martial arts beatdown with an added bit of superpower. Now the fight scenes. This series has a bunch of kick-ass battles all throughout and the choreographers really know their craft and it shows. While DC's Arrow had mostly great, some good and a couple of lazy fights, the execution in Fist is so well done, it never seems contrived or hastily thrown together. Also, this show has one definitive fight scene which had me cheering wildly as I could see the setup for it unfolding. Danny and a couple of friends take a trip off continent and the fight between Danny and the sworn defender is hands down one of the best I've ever seen. I put it on par in recent movies with John Wick's Gun Fu and the Iron Fist fight harkens back to classic Hong Kong Jackie Chan, but the Fist fight is real and visceral. It's inspired by a kung fu masterpiece, something that hasn't been seen for over 20 years, and it's truly great. And it's a TV show! Wow! I also want to mention the music for Iron Fist, which was composed by two-time Emmy Award-winning composer Trevor Morris, who worked on the Borgias TV series, as well as Olympus Has Fallen and Immortals. The title and background music really gives it a unique style, matching well with the on-screen action, compelling, and occasionally driving. Reminds me of uh, Daft Punk in a couple of fight scenes. Throughout, it's very well composed. Well, you can hear me singing some praises now. Starting this show knowing nothing about the character, comics, and seeing no trailers. I have to be honest, I didn't know if I would continue watching this after two episodes. While I can understand the necessary backstory at the beginning, and seeing it in its entirety, they could have addressed the pacing better at the start, as it might throw some potential viewers who would otherwise miss a fantastic show. Should you devote time to seeing it? On those merits, Marvel's new Iron Fist scores a 9 on the meter. I was really considering a 10, but I think that one problem at the start does affect perception, including my own. By the way, Luke Cage gets a 10. <laughs> That's just badass. Tiger strike that thumbs up button if you like this review. It really helps my channel. Thanks so much. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe for new content and click that bell icon to get notified when I put up a new video. I always read the comments, so if you have a question or if I miss something, then please do tell me down below. And let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching, and see you all again really soon. Bye for now.